Hello everyone and welcome to another episode here of Minecraft Realms. I am Nick with the Epic Film Guys. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to another episode here of Realms. And I am standing in a place that you probably aren't familiar with. Let's jump over into the game. And you can actually see that I am on top of the pumpkin and melon farm, which I actually have shut down at the moment because, well, here was the thing. First, I was gonna build this up. I was gonna add a lot of layers to this and I was gonna make it way taller, like at least as tall as the sugarcane farm and bamboo farm, if not a little bit taller. But then I decided I didn't ever really like the design of this building anyway. This was an early build here. This is, I think was the first structure I actually built this was the first farm I built, and I'm just kind of not happy with it anymore. Like, I think I can do a much, much better job building this up. So, I think what we're actually going to do is we're going to demolish this. Why, you might be asking yourself, do I need melons and pumpkins? Well, I'll show you just in a moment here. But, yeah, you can see here's the observer line that runs to the old pistons. And that's a shovel. <laughs> and here are our repeaters now this one has to be two ticks this one has to be one tick and i have to just remember that that this one has to come sideways down from the observers and feed into this one when i rebuild this because i think what we're going to do is instead of doing this design which you'll kind of see and actually i gotta get rid of this water block here i'm going to do like a fast demolition mode for this building but i wanted to at least show you guys the original kind of structure for this as it existed here before we get too much further. So, yeah, you can... Uh, oh, get packed ice in here too. Get out of here. Go away. Okay. So, you can see here, these are pumpkin stalks. We've got our pumpkin stalks here. And what would happen is, whenever the plant grows, it grows backward toward this. I've got the pistons extended out right now, so the farm is shut down, as I said. But... What would happen is, say a pumpkin grows, it trips back here, which activates the observer and activates the redstone line and kicks these pistons out and pushes the pumpkin out from here into the water stream. It goes down into the water stream and then it goes down in here. And this was just flowing water downward. It was just all flowing downward and it would get caught. There are bubbles down there, which you can see, and it gets caught in there and it gets delivered into the item transportation system. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do a box and I know it's already kind of a rectangle, but I'm going to do a box of this and kind of make it be a little bit different. So what we're going to have is we're going to have three rows of pistons each floor, one on the side, one on the side, and then one on the back. So the building's going to have to get wider. And what I'm probably going to end up doing is moving it back somewhat because it kind of collides with the sugarcane farm where I built the sugarcane farm. You can see here the blocks actually kind of collide. And I don't mind having buildings in really close proximity to each other. Obviously, I really want that, but I don't want them colliding. So I think this is actually going to end up moving back a little bit, a little bit more over the ocean. I'm going to build it some actual support since it doesn't have any right now. The only support that this has is just this big vertical column. This is all it has, and this actually goes down into where the nether wart farm is. This thing does, and this is just hollow with lights in it. And another, again, another bottleneck point why I need to change up the lighting design in this is this also uses these. And I think I'm going to try to work redstone lamps in here somehow. That way the redstone lamp will flicker on maybe or something like that whenever... I have the farm, whatever. I don't even know. I have not thought that far ahead, but I'm pretty sure, like I said, we are just going to go ahead and demolish this whole thing. And we're basically going to start from scratch, or at least we're going to demolish it down to the first floor and then kind of maybe start adapting it. But as I said before, why do I need melons and pumpkins? Well, because, ladies and gentlemen, in the interim, I built an iron farm. And this all credit for this design goes to Silent Whisper. I'll link the tutorial that he posted for Bedrock Edition down in the notes down below down in the uh, description but right now i am up in the quote-unquote lightning shield and the lightning shield this is protecting there's a villager down there and oh my god guys so this iron farm let me tell you uh, like the millionth person to complain about bedrock spawn rates but i'll do it anyway it just it's so slow 
this farm is dreadfully slow. And then you run into this problem here. This problem here where, see, there's an iron golem here. There's an iron golem, but where is he? He's standing outside of the farm. So he's not going to die out here. So I got to sit here, and I got to beat the crap out of him instead. And then these wandering traders spawn over here all the time, which is also really annoying. But you can see we've got a whole bunch, and this is one of the bigger frustrations. There's a dunce in there, and I hate having a dunce. Get out. Oh, we've got a pillager guy over there. We can't kill him, otherwise we're going to start a raid. But we've got eight farmers over here, which is really, really nice. And what am I... What's taking up room in my inventory that I got to get rid of here? Oh, let's go ditch this iron into the farm proper here. And the poppies, too, actually. And I can kind of show you how much this farm has collected since I've built it. And that's a lot of hours running around the island doing other stuff. And I had to steal some villagers from Mandy's village that she had. Because I was going over there and trading stuff. Uh, because as I described in, I don't think it was the previous episode, I think it was the one before that, but we have a, a couple bottlenecks in this game right now. One of them is iron. I'm using so much iron right now, but there are two pillagers in that boat. <sighs> I'm going to have to deal with that raid eventually at some point. I know I'm going to have to. but So essentially what you have is an iron bottleneck. So I decided to build the iron farm because even though I did that mining session which was really nice. I did mining and we got a whole bunch of, you know, stuff. It's great. We got a whole bunch of stuff. It's awesome. But we don't get enough iron from that sort of thing. So I decided to build an iron farm to at least try to help it or at least try to supplement it. But this is the hall. One and a half stacks of iron. Now granted, it's one and a half stacks of iron that I wouldn't have had before, but that is just way too slow for our needs. What I inadvertently found though when I built this design is, I mean, you can give the traders, the villagers, you can give them professions. And I gave them all composters, so they are all farmers, which means I can take crops and I can just trade them wholesale for emeralds. So just trading with them every day, I can get a stack and a half of emeralds. And I have something in the neighborhood right now. I already went over and disassembled the beacon that I built over at the hole that Mandy's digging. And instead of being made of iron and gold, it is now made of emerald and gold. Mostly emerald, believe it or not. There's over a stack of emerald blocks over there. And I have another stack and a half of emerald blocks already just from doing villager trading because they just cough up so many emeralds. And these guys aren't even cured where you turn them into a zombie villager and then you cure them and then their drop rates are that much better. Like, it's... It's crazy. It's absolutely insane how lucrative the farm is. The farm is, it, it's so, so, so lucrative that, I mean, basically I fixed the iron bottleneck at least temporarily by disassembling that beacon and that gave us two full stacks of iron blocks. So now we've got at least a decent amount of iron to work with again and I already, you know, built a ton of redstone resources with it and there's still a bunch left even after that. So... That at least takes care of that. And then we've got at least a small source of iron to supplement it in the meantime. We've at least got some iron coming in from this system here. But like I said, that's one of the frustrations is sometimes the iron columns will spawn here in this section and then they don't get caught in the farm and die. It's just really, really frustrating. Again, it's just one of those things where bedrock spawn rates, be it, you know, hostile mobs that you want for farms friendly mobsy it just doesn't matter nothing spawns right and ooh, one more thing i wanted to show you guys let's fly over here past this which hopefully oh it still lags it still lags i turned down i actually turned down the settings of the game including the bubbles you'll notice the bubbles on that bubble vader over there to the left they are not moving and that's because i changed them to be static bubbles because i was really 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 trying to save on performance over here i don't know what it is over here that's sucking up performance i really really do not I think it's just because when you look this way, like that's like the main area for the base. And there's no kelp in there. This is the new kelp collection system that I already showed you guys. But I went back into the kelp system. So I don't think the problem necessarily is that kelp isn't growing because I've done a lot of reading about the way that kelp grows. And basically it kind of, it grows and then it gets assigned a random tick rate and then 
it's basically like a percentage. You know, it, it if it hits that percentage again, it will grow again. If not, it won't grow until the next tick, and so on and so forth and so on and so forth until it reaches its maximum height. So the problem, I think, remember, and I might have told you guys about this, or I might have mentioned it in the world tour. Actually, I think I could have even showed it in the world tour because I still had kelp farms in the old world, and they were the older versions of these where there were observers all the way across. Like literally one of these stalks would reach the top, breaks the whole thing, starts the whole thing over. Now I didn't like that because I wanted it to at least build up a little bit more. But the problem is, is I only had three observers in the system. I went through each and every single one of these and I actually added two more observers. And so there are now five observers in this chain that can be triggered and can, you know, take care of items now, which is really, really nice. So we've now got even more observers, what you can see there. Nice spread. And I actually manually fired off all the farms after I put them in just to make sure all the redstone was still connected and everything worked. I didn't mess it up once, believe it or not. And I know that's hard to believe, but I did not. <laughs> everything still works perfectly fine the way it's supposed to. So I am hoping, and this was uh, something I did very, very recently, so that might be why there's no kelp in any of the systems yet. But at the very least, now there's more areas where the kelp can grow hit an observer, send a signal, and break it. I want to strike the happy balance. I may actually end up adding a couple more at the very end of these chains. I'm not sure. I really hate going in and fixing these things, especially these ones underwater because I have to build a box around it, suck the water out of it, go down inside, flood it so I can swim in the chamber here after I block off the vertical shaft going down, and then crawl in the one high space, get all the blocks fixed, and get the redstone fixed, and then get over here, and then jump back out and get back into the box, seal off to the, you know, it's just, it's a whole huge process to go through it. And I just don't know if I necessarily feel like doing it again. So we will see over time how much more kelp this might yield us. I mean, the farm, you know, they're going to grow as, as quick as they're going to grow and they're going to provide as much kelp as they're going to provide. But at the very least, having more observers in there is more chances that those pistons are going to fire or break those blocks. And I think that's the most important thing right now. Like, let's just keep breaking it and then just keep taking what grows, you know? So am I going to make it? Yes. Okay. So I'm actually going to jump into super fast demolition mode and we are going to rip this building out or at least we're going to tear down the first two floors here and we're going to get this down to the bottom floor and we are going to kind of go from there in terms of what we're going to do to change the design so hang on i'm going to go into super fast demolition mode and i will be right back hey guys it's nick checking in from the editing room once again and i just first of all Thank you so, so much for all of the amazing support that you guys have been giving me here on the channel. I really, really appreciate it. If you have not yet, please make sure to subscribe, like this video so that YouTube knows and ring that bell, ring that bell, ladies and gentlemen. I would really, really, really appreciate it. And I just want to talk to you guys just briefly while we mow through this farm here, even though... Watching this and knowing the farm that I've replaced it with is not being nearly as productive is really breaking my heart right now, but it's okay. I'll survive. But the fourth annual live stream for the cure, as we've discussed in previous videos, is set from May 27th through the 31st. It's going to be a special four hour kickoff event on the Wednesday on the 27th and then 48 hours of live content from May 28th through May 31st. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I am now scheduling guests for the event, and it's amazing. We've already got a ton of people reaching out, wanting to be part of the event, wanting to make a difference, and wanting to raise money for the Cancer Research Institute. So I am super, super appreciative of that. Don't forget to subscribe over at twitch.tv slash epicfilmguys. That's where the entire event is going to be streaming live the entire time. And like I said, the kickoff event, I'm going to try to do some fun stuff, try to have some fun guests or whatever the case may be. I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen there, but I am very, very excited for the event. And I'm very, very excited for everybody to check it out. Fourth year doing it, $10,000. It's going to be our biggest goal yet, but we smashed our goal last year by the end of day two. So I really, really think that we should have no problem knocking this one absolutely out of the park. And let's go swing back over into the video and see what kind of shenanigans I am up to. Thank you so much. Well, I guess having to eat is as good a time as any to come back. Oh, man. It's one of those things in Minecraft where, you know, you just... 
early builds are just not as good as later builds. And you know, I've got so many different projects going on. I've actually, like, as of recording this video, I haven't even finished building the thing I said I was going to build in the last video, so that video is not even done yet. I still want to finish that, and through the magic of editing and release dates of videos, that'll all make sense chronologically to you guys, but not so much to me in terms of recording it, because I just kind of wholesale realized, I was like, oh, you know what, I totally didn't build that farm thing I was supposed to build. Oops. <laughs> and you've also noticed I've been chucking a ton of blocks into this water stream here, just because I'm just so full of blocks, like, I just didn't realize how fast I was filling up on all of them. So this is the first floor. It's kind of... A... <sighs> Again, this is the first floor. And I think the first floor is done and dusted, I think. Yeah, there's a couple more items down below we gotta go grab yet, but... I kind of like leaving this here, at least as a blueprint, but, like, I don't like, like, I had to wrap these trap doors all the way around it to hide all the redstone. Like, it just doesn't look good anymore. Like, none of the other buildings have nearly this many oak accents or anything like that. None of them are even close. All of them have, like, a little bit, but this one deliberately has, like, a ton of them just to try to hide all the redstone that's going on in the building. I think we're going to move it a little bit further out into the ocean. The only difference is... This is the pipe that leads down into it. I'm not moving this. This is staying right where it is. So however the water stream, however the items get collected in here for the water stream, they're gonna have to end up at the same point for where the bubble elevator is gonna take them downward. Cause I'm not doing that again. I'm just not, no, it's not happening. I don't care. I absolutely don't care. So like I said, I think what I wanna do is I wanna do maybe more of a box so if we move this out to see a few more blocks, I mean, there's nothing but space back here. We got nothing but space back here. And then we can build. I want to have this row and I want to have this row, but then I want to have another row going across the back. And then we're going to have like a big item collection patch. And we're just going to have some water source blocks in both sides. And that'll carry that all the way to the center and to that final block there. You know, so that way I'll get swept down in the water collection system. If I can do that, if I can add another layer in, and then I build this thing four layers high, we're talking 12 different sets of pistons, 12 different farms activating. And this thing, I mean, you guys have seen that chest that I've emptied out a number of different times. All the shulker boxes, if you look, especially the melons, but the pumpkins as well. And those melons, keep in mind, those are full melon blocks. Those aren't even just the melons themselves, the melon slices. So, I mean, it's kind of insane. So, like, this isn't going to be able to stay the same either. I want to redo the redstone configuration for this. I want to think of a new way to try to do that. Although, there's not really any other way to do this. This is kind of how it has to be. Because in Java Edition, in Java Edition, an observer will detect when something grows. And that wasn't connected just now. Yeah, an observer can detect when something grows. So, like, if there's an observer sitting where that piston is, and this stem grows from one stage of maturity to the next, or if it simply grows and changes shape so that a pumpkin or a melon pops off of it, it causes a signal update to the observer, which will fire off the redstone, which can fire off a piston. So you can put the observer facing any number of different ways. But in this edition of the game in Bedrock, it doesn't do that with the stem. So you have to detect where the fruit itself goes down and give an opportunity to break it. So this is really the only way that you can really do it is to just have the piston right there. And one of the other things with this farm, and I don't believe, unfortunately, there's a way to fix it. There's so much loss associated with this farm. Now, again, you guys have seen the yield from this farm, so the loss isn't necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't really affect it all that much. It's not terrible, but it's bad enough that I want to try to remedy it somehow, if at all possible. The problem is, is now I have to go back and I have to get all of the items I just chucked into the bubble vader here. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm going to be much happier when I rebuild this thing. I was never the hugest fan of the design of that building, especially with some of the other building designs I have come up with in the interim. Like, I think that, like, I mean, think of the cactus farm, like the different layers, the different stone textures and types that you've got in there. Plus, I think that was before I really started doing all this super weathered stone. So it's just one of those things where it was long due for an update. It kind of needs it. Mandy just 
left a bunch of terracotta here, apparently. Mandy, I don't know what I don't know what she's been doing lately. She built a base in like a terracotta biome, and then I really need more sea lanterns, like something fierce. And yeah, who knows how many blocks. We've still got blocks making their way in here. Uh, so this is going to take forever. So I am actually going to cut here. Oh, there's just a bunch of chalk boxes here. No, I don't even know. But anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I'm going to rejoin you guys when I have kind of collected all the items back up and we're ready to get outside and start building. Okay, and I am back, and I have amassed a little army of shulker boxes here. I finally broke down and did it, ladies and gentlemen. I finally did it. I have a redstone box for all the fun little redstone bits and bobs. Got redstone, got droppers, dispensers, sticky pistons, regular pistons, hoppers, redstone lamps, daylight sensors, observers, repeaters, comparators, all the works, all the trimmings in here. So I have a whole bunch of redstone stuff all in one place to use at my disposal. Then, of course, we've got our building blocks. We've got more building blocks and then because i had so much spillover we have more building blocks this also includes all of our seeds our hoe those oak uh trap doors which i probably actually should grab some more of those while i'm at it let's grab those all right so now i think we should have enough stuff necessarily to kind of get cracking on this build And like I said, I, this whole thing, I'm going to have to demolish this bottom floor too. Like, there's no way around it because I've got to move the whole thing at least probably, I don't know. How many blocks of overlap do we have? One, two, three. So I'm probably going to move the building at least like four blocks this way. So yeah, that's going to be a thing. I may just leave this support pillar. I don't know how I'm going to do... Oh, I have no idea how any of this is going to happen now. I might run some purper. Like, this purper may stay here and it may continue further down. I'm also running into a purper bottleneck. I'm going to run out of it probably doing this project. Hopefully, I have enough to at least finish the project. So that way I don't have to, you know, stop and do an end run. Mandy needs some gear and stuff anyway, so I promised her I would do an end run really soon anyway. But it's just a matter of actually, like, getting it done. That's the problem, and... Ugh, just what a pain. But it's kind of necessary. Like I said, I could always just build the building further that way and just make it closer to everything else, but I kind of don't want to do that because, like I said, I'm not a fan of this design. Uh, you know what I might end up having to do? Not moving the whole pipe, not moving the whole thing, but what I may end up having to do is kind of cutting it off below the water line here and kind of doing something like this where I've got ice in it on the bottom and then like it can come over in a vertical chute like over this way into it and then down. Like that might be what I end up having to do because I don't want to have to try to build around having that stupid pipe sticking out of the ground like that because that's going to make it much more difficult to actually do. And yeah, I just don't, I, I don't know. I don't know if I feel like necessarily doing that. So I'm probably going to end up just demolishing the whole rest of the building and moving it. So I'm going to cut all that out as well. And I'm going to get some groundwork laid for kind of the layout, kind of how this thing is going to look when it's all said and done. And I will rejoin you guys up here on the surface after that. Welcome back, everybody. And we are hanging out here at the farm. Ooh, this is going to be amazing so i got the rest of it ripped out and let me show you what we have done here right after we're going to grab our episode screenshot just like this this is going to be perfect i like it i like it i like it i like it bam got it so let's show you kind of how this design of this farm works what is that that i see down there Oh, there's melons in there. Now, this farm unfortunately still has the same loss issues that the original farm had, but hopefully we're just going to have so many crops planted, it's not going to matter. I mean, we gained a ton anyway last time, so it didn't really seem to matter. So first of all, like I said, I ripped this whole thing out of here. Look at how much bigger this thing is footprint-wise than the old building. The old building only came over to like here, and it ended like i don't know somewhere like right around here like it was a small building big enough just for like two strips of dirt with eight that's it i finally did have to reroute this pipe i really didn't want to but i realized that i had to i also decided to rip out the, remember that vertical shaft that was here for no discernible reason i have no idea why i built that big shaft there 
and it was just hollow. It just had just some glowstone in it just to block out the light. I don't know why I had that there, but I ripped that out and I rerouted the pipe and I obviously clipped the pipe off at the top, rerouted everything. So now the pipe travels over this way, over this way. And down here is where the farm drains out into this system. And then we've got some walls there holding it up. I've got to obviously build some supports for this building and for the piping and everything underneath here, but that's going to come a little bit later in the pro <laughs> proceedings here. But let's take a look at just kind of like the outside of this. And I kind of built this literally right to the edge of the ice biome, thankfully like a couple blocks in there where the water source is at the bottom, not inside of the tundra biome, so it doesn't freeze, which is really, really good because that would have sucked. Although I could have just put like glowstone or something else underneath it, it wouldn't have really mattered. And you can see one of the things that we've got going on here is there are some lamps that are just kind of permanently on. I'll explain why that is momentarily. And what I would really like to do, actually, is replace that with some glass at the bottom there for kind of a uniformity's sake. I may put some of those trap doors in along the thing just to give it a little bit more of an accent. Ran purple along the sides here, and then we've got our lamps and we've got our shut-off switches. So you can shut off all of the farms, again, by flipping these switches, and that's going to extend the pistons and lock everything off. And I decided it was really, really nice to have the little indicator lamp here. These will also flicker on and off, obviously, when the observers fire and get rid of everything else. But I just thought those were so, so cool. I thought those were really, really a very nice touch. I think being able to turn this farm on and off is a big, big selling point of it. And now let's head up top and I can kind of show you the layout of the farm. So if you remember how the old one was laid out, it was basically this right here. And then we had another one right next to it over here like so. Now I decided to just build a box of them. I was like, it doesn't make sense to just build three. Why don't I just build four? So that's what I did. We just built four. You can see that our pistons are offset. So we have this here. And I mean, this one here, when this grows back to this, like most of the time, probably it's not really going to plop into the water. Unfortunately, we're going to have some loss, like I said, with the way that this is designed. But we're going to get just more production overall. This set of layers here, like... This is as much as the farm had before in terms of actual straight up production. And I'm going to do probably at least three or four more floors of this. Like we're going to have a ton more that's going to be coming in. And I just decided to recess some end rods in here just to give us a little bit of light down here. Obviously, you see we're flowing toward the center where we would end up and eventually fall down into the pipe just like so. Fish in there like usual because fish are just jerks. And I decided to just leave this whole thing open. So now all of the floors, all of their items are all going to plop down into this one water pool instead of having multiple water layers per floor. That also did, of course, bring about the challenge of we have to hydrate all of our crops, which is what we have this here for. Oh, I actually need to eat something because I am hungry. My inventory is a disaster right now. <laughs> But you can see here, and I mean, this obviously, this is just flowing downward, so this isn't hitting this redstone or anything. And this is the switch for those lights. So those lights, I can't rig up all of the lights. Because of the way the farm's laid out, I can't rig up all of the lights to be triggered when the farms are locked. So if you look, like, say, here. Yeah, this one works because it's obviously right, well, actually, the, no. But hang on, I'll show you this one <laughs> here. So this one, because of the way the switch is, boop, it's going to flick this on. Now, I could put one lever per side for the farm. I didn't want to do that, though. I wanted two levers on one side and then no levers on the other side. So that's kind of why we had to add just a switch in here just to have these lights be this way. So these ones are just kind of permanently on. So there's just a couple of lights that are permanently on. The rest of them are off by default unless we lock the farm. So you can tell the farm is locked when you flick the switch and the light comes on. And we've got our mess of shulker boxes over here. I have burned through a ton of my redstone resources already. I'm already almost, yeah, I've got one stack of pistons left, but not enough to do two more full floors. And it's the same exact redstone design that I have. We've got a two tick repeater here, a single tick repeater here. So the signal, whenever the observers fire, will travel down here, boom, and then over here. And then this will obviously light, light up that light. 
light up that lamp. And I love this. We just got this nice little glass rim in here and a nice block layer over the top. Nothing can spawn down in there because that's only a one block wide gap. And then we have, of course, our next layer getting all ready to be built. Basically, what I'm doing whenever I go around here is just using stone bricks as a filler block. And we'll build up a layer of stone bricks and then we will go up from here to build another one. I have so, just the number of blocks I have, guys, is just, it's like offensively stupid. There we go. Suck those right into the thing there. And these blocks are going to be hidden, so we don't need to be able to see these blocks, which is fine. Same thing with this. We're going to cover up anything that is an open space right now. That water that I have flowing that's hydrating the farms, unfortunately, I accidentally broke a block and it flooded my redstone on one of them. And because the repeater setup was still in place, the farm just kept firing over and over and over <laughs> again. It was, yeah, it was super fun, guys. Super, super fun. Like I said, stone bricks we're just using as filler here because we've got enough stone bricks that we can just do this with them. And this will be the basis for the next floor of the farm. Like I said, exact same design, but I just decided to make a box building out of it and said, now it does make the building a little bit plain. That's why I decided when I stuck the redstone lamps here, I was like, you know what? We can use this as an excuse to use a purple runner, run that all the way down the edge. We'll probably put some carpets or something on the purple because this is spawnable. The purple is spawnable here. And when the lights are off, it's going to be very dark. So we'll probably get like some purple carpet or something. I got to figure out a cool color to accent it with. Maybe, you know what, probably wouldn't be too bad because we are a little bit in the tundra biome is maybe some white carpet as well. Something like that. I'm not 100% sure what we're going to do just yet. Let's see what we got. There we go. There we go. I know this is not the best redstone in the world. I know it's also not the most efficient farm design in the world, probably, but it is what it is. I just like building things that are mine that I can say, like, you know, the only thing I had to look up uh, when I first built this farm was this repeater setup. And basically it's just, you know, that is what it is. And I decided on the layout that I built in that. And now I'm deciding on this layout that I'm building in this. So now what we have to do is we have to build up our next layer here. Where are my cracked stone bricks? There they are. And yeah, we've got just a ton of different blocks yet that we've got to use here. Actually, you know what I don't need anymore? Uh, these signs. Let's get rid of those. We will need some... We will need some more purple at some point, so we'll grab some more of that. Uh, ice, I also don't need, or packed ice, I don't need. Regular ice, I do still need so I can create the floors where we're hydrating. And we've got a bunch of seeds yet. We've still got tons and tons more to plant here. But this farm, I mean, basically, like I said, I'm going to at least double this. So we're going to have at least double the productive capacity that we had for the previous farm. And I just, like I said, I love this design. I love the way that it works. You know what I also might do is hang some lanterns under here. Hang some lanterns. It might look cool with just lanterns, and then they'll kind of fit in with the motif of the lanterns on the signposts and all that stuff. I don't know 100%. But let me, I'm going to finish up this next part of this, and then we're going to wrap the video. This is pretty much it. And I may just honestly add more traders and things like that, just because why not, you know? And we are, of course, and that was one of the other things with the old building is it didn't follow the kind of mixed block palette that we've been using for all of the rest of these structures. So it kind of was like, it didn't look all the best. I hear you, witch, and I don't care. Okay. You know what? I just do not care. Yeah, but it didn't follow this mixed block pattern where we're mixing in, obviously, all these other different stone brick textures and things like that. So I'm glad that we have kind of disassembled everything and we're making it a little bit more our own now. And we're going to stick some chizzy right there. Get another stair piece in here. And another stair piece in there. Get these guys going in here. Why is this on? Why is this... Unlock the farm. The crops are in place now. There's no point in having the farm locked, especially when we haven't been sending any kind of production or anything down below. We're going to stick a stair sticking out like that. And get some um, cracked stone bricks. Let's get another stair in here, upside down this time. 
Let's get one over there too. And there we go. And screw it. There we go. So that is perfect, just like that. And then what we need to do is we need to once again do another layer of filler blocks. Because we have to we have to make sure this is all sealed in here because we have water that flows all over the place in here now. So we have to make sure all the redstone, everything down below is completely sealed off. Except for obviously that little hole where the redstone is going to go. But now we can cover up all the other redstone blocks that are all over the toe. Nope, we can't do that. Nope, not you. <laughs> How did I have to do this before? Oh, I think you know what it is. I, you know, and this is not kind of coming together the way that I did it last time. You know, I did change the way that these are offset, though, so maybe that's why. Did I cover this up? No, I didn't. Okay. It's like, that wouldn't have been good, right? Let's grab some more stone bricks. We're already out of stone bricks in that box. Now we get to start working on this bunch. And there we go. We're open there. And don't cover that up. There we go. And yeah, this is just, like I said, it's just going to be so, so, so nice once we get this farm completely up and running. And obviously, you're never going to see these blocks. That's why I'm just using stone brick for all of them. Because we don't need to mix in a bunch of other stuff for no reason here. And we'll run one final test before I cover up the rest of the layer here. Before I cover up the last of the redstone. Just to make sure we can still lock all the farms. Which means they are all still, of course, active. Okay. And... All right, so let's just one more time. And yoink, yoink. And let's make sure here. And last one. Man, there are these pillager patrols literally everywhere all the time, and I do not want to deal with the raids, so I have not been really paying much attention to them. They can't get to me from the highway, so it doesn't really matter right now, but... It's just annoying. I think what I'm going to do is the highway, actually. I'm going to take an extension of it. Kind of, like, right there. Like, right between those two lights. Like, that one and that one. Like, right there. And it's going to go across that way. Behind where the iron farm is. Behind this building and everything. And we're going to continue an extension of the highway. Down in the other direction. So, now what we need is we need more dirt. So, this is actually, believe it or not, I got both of these layers of this farm built without having to go back downstairs whatsoever. But unfortunately, that is going to come to an end because we are going to have to go back down there and get a whole bunch of stuff. My mouse just died. <laughs> what in the world? Oh, I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you, it's you can't win. You just can't win. So that is pretty much where I'm going to wrap up the video here just because my mouse died and I got to switch everything back. But I do really, really appreciate everybody out there checking out the videos Thank you so, so much out there, everybody, for watching. Please subscribe if you like the content. Make sure you get that bell on. Get it on. Get it on. Get it on. And like the video. Let YouTube know that you really, really enjoy the content here on the channel. I will be back with... I don't even know, but this will be done by the time I come back because I'm not going to build any more of this on camera. I do super appreciate you guys checking out the channel. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.